everybody. Watch out, or I'm gonna shoot up in my trousers. <laughs> and it's hello from me. <laughs> hey, sexy lady, how about I help you out down there? I don't half love your tits, baby. Oh, do you, Johnny? There is, of course, one other great film style of the past that should have been hung on to. Uh, Qantas never crashed. Qu Qantas never crashed. Definitely, definitely never crashed. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Babbitt, yeah. you've never uh, met Charlie your brother, Bitter but, Bitter uh... <laughs> well, tell him yourself, Raymond. Oh, tell, tell him yourself, Raymond. Yeah, definitely, definitely tell him yourself. Don't you know I'm autistic, be realistic, but I got a good head for statistics. His best friend is an oven mitt. Turn on the shower and I'll have a fit. <laughs> John and Norma Major have obviously got a great relationship going there. I mean, he lives at number 10 and she lives in Huntingdon. But I felt, I felt Maggie was more sexually motivated. I mean, that's why Dennis looks like he does, despite the fact that he's only 26 years old. <laughs> the reason that couples are always arguing is that you lose interest in having sex with each other after about two days, and then there's nowhere to go. It is a statistical fact that couples argue more about where to go of an evening than about anything else. And each member of the couple will always refuse to make the decision. Now, thankfully, not all decisions about where to go are made in this way. Mein Fjord! Yeah, going. Here is the map of Europe. I think, first of all, we should invade Poland. Ah, Poland. You don't like Poland? No, no, no. Poland is fine. You know, I had been thinking, well, we always invade Poland. Maybe Czechoslovakia for a change, but no, no, no. You, that's fine. No, I don't mind. If you want to invade Czechoslovakia, we can invade Czechoslovakia. No, no, no. <laughs> Look, going, I'd rather invade Czechoslovakia myself now, because I know if we go to Poland, you're just going to be miserable the whole time. <laughs> oh! One thing I've noticed about long-term relationships is that as time goes on, you become less and less inhibited in each other's physical presence. It's probably just as well this doesn't happen earlier on in relationships. Hello, yeah, Donna, that's right, it's Dave, yeah. I met you the other day. I just wondered if you wanted to come round to my place and, like, clean your teeth while I have a dump. All <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, you're already going round to Steve's to fart under the duvet. <laughs> Yeah, I, I recently just split up with my girlfriend and I still don't understand what it's all about because I asked her why and she said, you are completely immature, period. And I said, <laughs> period. <laughs> the best representation in our culture of the long-term relationship is, of course, Simon Bates' Our Tune, which is presently under threat of being axed. So I'd like everyone watching to write to Radio 1 and say how much they like it because it does cheer me up every day to hear a laughable catalogue of personal disaster. <laughs> I particularly like the ones about a woman. Let's just call her Linda. <laughs> and Linda has a baby, and yeah, the baby was very ill, and yeah, six months later it died, and then on the way to the funeral, the hearse crashed and all her relatives died. And then Linda thought nothing else could go wrong, but then her boyfriend got cervical cancer, and then <laughs> there was a minor nuclear accident underneath her settee. But one thing has kept Linda going throughout all this, and that's Shut Up of Your Face by Joe Dolce. <laughs> The big advert against long-term relationships has got to be your present generation of 45 to 60-year-old parents. People who went on to be parents in the 1970s seem to have had their own wedding ceremony. Do you, Victor Charles Norton, take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife? I do. And do you promise after four or five years to stop having sex with her and then build up a large collection of pornography in your bedroom drawer? <laughs> I do. And you promise to make a last-ditch attempt to revive it all in 1973 by taking a series of Polaroids of each other naked. <laughs> Polaroids so ghastly they are turned down by Fiesta readers' wives. <laughs> I do. And do you, a Maureen Margaret Corby, promise to buy some padded terrelene slacks and to wear them all the time? I do. And you promise to say something mind-bogglingly stupid every day, but always follow it with a little smile of self-congratulation. No. <laughs> of course I do. <laughs> I ask you both, 
Do you swear for three days of every month to be not talking to each other? <laughs> Good. <laughs> and lastly, do you swear in 1971 to buy a plastic three-piece suite so garish that not even Huggy Bear would have it in his apartment? <laughs> we do. <laughs> Recently, we've seen renewed controversy about Sunday trading. The root of the problem is that it says in the Bible that you should do no work on Sunday. So if we keep disobeying this rule, is some terrible punishment going to be sent upon us? And it came to pass that he looked down upon the world he had created, and he saw that, lo, on the Sabbath there was much mowing of lawns and much purchasing of barbecue equipment from Texas home care. But Noah did no work upon the Sabbath. For lo, he watched the EastEnders omnibus and fell asleep even until Antiques Roadshow. And the Lord spoke to him, saying, Noah, I command you to build an ark of oak and cedar wood. And Noah replied, saying, Crikey, I'll have to nip down to Texas Home Care and buy a new hammer. <laughs> Later on in the show, we'll be asking, was Jesus really a carpenter? <laughs> Throughout this series, we have had complaints about swearing. So from now on, we will employ specific code words. So when we say chuff or chuffing, we mean the F word. And for the C word, we would use the phrase Henry Kelly. <laughs> Although this may lead to some confusion in, for example, the sentence, Henry Kelly, what a Henry Kelly! <laughs> of course, normally, swearing is covered in broadcasting by the beep, but I think eventually this just begs the question, you know, what is Roadrunner actually saying? <laughs> there is, however, the word that is worse than any of these. All right, hi, I'm Terry Christian. All right, great, stop the nonsense, stop the nonsense, bollocks, stop the nonsense. <laughs> Funny, what they, oh, that's great. That, all right, right, OK. Stop the nonsense. But first of all, Amanda. <laughs> there are a number of things about the Gulf War that have been left unsaid. First of all, the Allies are employing carpet bombing. So that's Allied carpet bombing. <laughs> Hundreds of Iraqi missile sites must go. <laughs> yeah, and like the ecologists are saying that we can't bomb the Iraqi oil fields because, they say, it would turn Iraq into a desert. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're really going to miss their prize-winning marrows. <laughs> But thankfully, it looks like Iraq's going to lose, you know, which is good, because if they won and took over here, you know, people would be forced to adapt to the Iraqi way of life. <laughs> Another thing is that in Iraq, everyone has their surname first. So Saddam is actually Hussein Saddam's surname. So if they won, we'd have Davis Dickey, Do Scooby, and Large Eddie and Little Sid. <laughs> I remember shortly after the uh, war broke out, the BBC took Neighbours off the air, and I think this is because the acting in Neighbours is so bad, it looks as though the entire cast has been captured by the Iraqis and made to say those lines. <laughs> and then, of course, they took off Dad's Army. Now, a lot of people couldn't understand this, but what they don't realise is that some episodes of Dad's Army can be construed as relevant to what has happened in the Gulf. Now, look here, Wilson, you listen to me. I don't care what the verger says. I think we should invade Kuwait. <laughs> I'm awfully sure that's wise. <laughs> of course, Dad's army is back on now. But we think not only should it be on, it should be an integral part of the coverage. Over now, live to the Pentagon briefing room for a quick report from Captain Stormin Mannering. <laughs> now, simmer down, everybody. Simmer down. If you look at this screen, you will see film of an attack on an Iraqi missile launcher. This box here in the top right-hand corner is Corporal Jones. <laughs> we will move towards the target, shouting, they don't like it up'em. 
Yeah. You will then destroy the target using a hand-operated, radar-guided, highly explosive smart bomb, which was knitted by Godfrey's sister, Dolly. <laughs> The Dad's Army decision is still under attack from some MPs for spreading alarm and despondency. Hello. Well, on tonight's Newsnight, we are joined by George Harvey, Professor of Strategic Studies at Sheffield University, Mr Andrew Sharrock, founder and so far sole member of Sun Journalists for Disarmament, and <laughs> Private Fraser. The refinery <laughs> is leaking, leaking, oil spilling everywhere. <laughs> Hundreds of cormorants doomed. <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. Sharrock. Now, what do you think, Private Fraser? <laughs> <laughs> Dogs hold the same place in British affections as guns do in America's. You can buy them really easily, you shouldn't need a licence, and they both kill people. <laughs> the only difference is that a 45 Magnum doesn't crap on the pavement afterwards. <laughs> Actually, it's not dogs I like, dislike, so much as a certain type of dog owner. And more than anything, I hate that sticker that you see in the backs of people's cars that says, CAUTION! SHOW DOGS IN TRANSIT! As if you're going to say, damn, I was deliberately going to ram into the back of that car. <laughs> well, I don't think I'll bother now because they've got show dogs in transit. And you know what show dogs are? Those horrible quaffered pooches that ponce up and down at Crufts. What I really hope is that when those Crufts dogs go down the park, the other dogs, instead of sniffing around their arse, just beat them up. <laughs> because they deserve it. I mean, suppose all dogs behave like that. Come on, boy, there's two climbers lost in this snowdrift, so have a blow dry and then jump onto this box. <laughs> The only car sticker even more aggravating than show dogs in transit is the one that says, Caution, I slow down for horses. <laughs> what choice have you got if a horse walks in front of your car? It's like saying, Caution, I slow down when I reach the back wall of my garage. <laughs> now, we can't go much further here without mentioning Rottweilers. These are becoming more and more popular with all social groups. This photo <laughs> was taken at Ascot in 1980, and coincidentally, no one has seen Shergar since. <laughs> the trouble with Britain is that it hasn't got any really scary animals. America has bears and alligators, Australia's got funnel web spiders, India's got tigers and cobras, but the most dangerous animal you're likely to encounter here is the adder, or a slightly grumpy squirrel. <laughs> grumpy, probably, because Carling Black Label aren't paying him any repeat fees. <laughs> Now, this may account for the cosy image of animals that we're brought up with. Who knows what effect it would have on children's perceptions if all those cuddly cartoon animals behaved a bit more like the real thing. <laughs> Officer Dibble, Officer Dibble, I hope you like the dead bird I have mangled with its entrails all over your doorstep. <laughs> okay, Choo Choo, now go and sick up a fur ball all over the carpet. Okay, T.C. <laughs> okay, okay. Move it, move it, move it, move it, move it, move it, move it. Top cat, I've told you not to use the police phone after licking your own genitals. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Tell me, when are we to marry? Uh, I can't marry you, Miss Piggy. Uh, you see, I fertilize externally, and, uh, well, I, I just dribble all over your back. 